G'day and welcome to another episode of Built by Dan. For those of you who have seen my previous videos, you'll know that it's completely out of character for me to have my garage in a mess and parts laid out all over the floor. But for this episode, I'm going to make an exception. I'm going to give you a detailed overview of all the parts that come as part of this comprehensive GT40 kit. I'll also address some of the main comments from my previous video. Wow, what an overwhelming response to my last video. Thanks to all of you that have watched, liked, commented, subscribed. Uh, it means a lot to me. I have tried to respond to as many comments as I possibly can. Uh, I think I've got just about all of them or at least acknowledged them. Uh, I do take on board the feedback that I receive. Uh, I know that the audio hasn't been great in some of my previous videos. I've been trying different camera and mic uh, configurations and just haven't been able to get something that works. I have purchased a new camera and a wireless microphone as has been recommended by many of you. So he's hoping that the audio for this episode and future episodes will be much better. So I wanted to try and cover off on some more details on the kit today. Uh, I have laid out a lot of the parts that came as part of this kit around the garage and I'll give you a quick run through of what just what's included. It is quite a comprehensive kit. Uh, so I've got a list of some questions that have been raised, some of the more common ones. Uh, some of the information I don't know off the top of my head, so I've got a few notes here and I'll look to run through them and we'll get stuck into a bit of a tour of all these parts. So who manufactures this kit? So this kit is designed and manufactured by a company in Queensland, Australia called Absolute Pace. Uh, what I'll do is I'll link their website uh, down in the, the description below. So if you want, you can go and have a look at that. They do have some brochures there that you can download that also outline some of the information that I'll present in this video. So there were comments noting that it's quite a comprehensive kit. Um, and whether all the parts came with the kit or whether I had to purchase them or source them separately. So all the parts that I'm going to show you today come as part of the kit. So when you're looking at the, the cost or the value of the kit, um, I suppose you'll start to appreciate pretty quickly why it is the price that it is. Um, I've got some really good quality parts and there are a lot of parts there. Um, there are some parts that aren't included and I'll also try and cover that today as well. So there's been a couple of questions about the, what level of kit did I order. Um, now I'm not familiar with the different levels of kits that other manufacturers offer. I think someone mentioned the RCR Deluxe Kit. Um, I don't really know what that inco incorporates, so I can't really comment on how that aligns with this kit. But what I can do is run you through what is included in this kit and the various stages of this kit. So this kit's available in three stages. The first stage is a starter package and that includes the chassis, body panels, and basic brake and suspension components. Stage two is the roller add-on kit and that includes roll bars, the body fitted to the chassis and temporarily aligned or initially aligned, uh, drive shafts, additional brake and suspension components as well as steering rack. And then stage three is the finishing add-on kit, which is everything else that you'll see here today, brake lines, engine and trans mounts, fuel system, wheels, cooling system, electrical and lighting, interior components, and the list goes on. So I purchased all three stages at once, uh, which is why there's so much here in this kit. Um, I just didn't want to take the risk of purchasing one or two stages and then having to, well, being delayed when I finally decide that, all right, let's place the order for stage three now. And then there's a considerable delay to that kit, that component or that kit uh, actually making its way to me to be able to progress the build. In terms of kit options, there is an extensive list of options available by this from this manufacturer. Um, I'm just going to jump to the options that I selected for my kit and they are a carbon body upgrade, so it's just sort of stronger and lighter body panels, a custom gel coat colour, the standard colour is white and obviously I've gone with a medium grey, Graziano chassis upgrade, because I selected the Graziano transaxle, uh, it is slightly bigger than the typical transaxles that are used in these cars, so there were some modifications required to the chassis to accommodate that. 
uh, mark and perform cutouts for the body panels. So all the once the body panels are taken out of the molds, uh, generally there's a lot of items that still need to be cut out, whether they be vents, uh, headlight holes, fog lights. Uh, what else is there? Um, that's probably the most part. There's quite a few vents on this car, actually, believe it or not. Um, fuel filler holes. So they all get, I got, had all them cut out by the manufacturer so that I knew they were in the right location, the right size, all that sort of thing. It's just one less thing that I need to try and guess and uh, work through myself. Uh, they provided an upgraded gauge set and a stainless steel fly-by-wire linkage set up for the uh, Coyote fly-by-wire throttle controller. So having rambled off all those high level components, how about I take you around the garage and I'll give you a quick tour and point out some of the, the main components that come as part of this kit. There'll be a lot more there that I won't necessarily mention, but you'll be able to see nonetheless. So starting over here, we've got a couple of bolt boxes. So I can give you a look of, as to how they're set up. Basically all broken down into compartments and then there's an image or a list, if you want to call it that, of the bolts, their sizes, their threads and what they are for. Makes it nice and handy to find the right bolt when you need it. We've got the drive shafts, CV boots, bearings, moving around to suspension, coil over shock absorbers, all the suspension mounting brackets, suspension wishbones, bell cranks, another set of coilovers there. Then moving on to the cooling system. So we've got the hard tubes just down in front of me. They're to run through the center tunnel, link the radiator to the engine. We've got the fans, there's two of them there. The radiator, some silicon hoses to join the uh, the coolant tubes to the radiator and the flexible tubes to the hard tubes. We've got the header and overflow tank. All the mounting brackets for the header and overflow tanks. Air conditioning and the flexible coolant hoses there. So both for the front where you connect the radiator to the hard tubes and then from the hard tubes to the engine. We've got the brake components here, or the majority of them anyway. We've got four piston brake calipers for all front and rear. We've got the two handbrake calipers at the back. 300 mil slotted and cross-drilled brakes. A set of billet uh, reservoirs for the clutch and brake fluids. And all the pre-formed or pre-fabricated, pre-bent hard lines for the brake and clutch, as well as the flexible brake lines. And up the back there, we've got the master cylinder kits, so they're all Willwood. Uh, the billet reservoirs are much nicer than those white plastic reservoirs that come with the, the master cylinder kit. We've got a nice set of Halibrand wheels with left and right threaded spinners obviously for the left and right hand side of the car. I really did want BRMs with the orange centers, but unfortunately this kit manufacturer wasn't able to supply them. Come around to all the fuel system components. We've got first and second stage filters, fuel pump, all the mounting brackets, all the hoses to connect them. We've got a couple of lengths of fuel hose so they can be cut to length and all the attachments that are required to basically develop a complete system running from the tanks through the filters, pumps, and to the fuel lines or the fuel feed for the engine. We've got the fuel filler caps and fuel filler hose at the back. And then we've got two stainless steel fuel tanks that mount into the side panels of the chassis. So just have a quick look at the engine, or sorry, not the engine, but the body components over here. We have the gas struts for the front and rear clip. And then we have a nice set of polished stainless steel handles. So as I said, all the body panels are in a custom gel coat finish. It's a really good quality finish. 
they obviously still have some of the mould seams on there. The windscreen is supplied. And back over here, I did skip over the dash. So it is an original style dash. Allows for air conditioning as well. So we'll just need to cut out all of those gauge holes and mount the gauges in there and then get it trimmed. Got steering components here. So the steering rack and steering column, as well as some brackets and bearings and steering lock that go with it. And then we move on over to some sound deadening and insulation. So the small black roll in front here is the sound deadening to line the inside of the cabin. The thin white rolls are a self-adhesive aluminium heat shield for it in, on the inside of the rear clip for the engine bay, as well as on a couple of the, the walls of the cabin as well, the front and rear. Up the back, the black foam is to the rubber is to line the wheel well to stop a lot of the noise from stones flicking up from the tires. We've got a modern style bucket seat there that's supplied. Um, obviously it's not quite like the original style seat, uh, but I expect that they will be a lot more comfortable. We've got passenger and driver side um, sliding adjusters. And there are some optional headrests there, which I haven't quite yet decided whether I'll have them fitted or not. We've got door latch, all the supporting components for that. Gear shifter, gear shifter cables that connect to the Graziano transaxle, as well as a heat shield to go over those cables through the engine bay. Similar story here for the handbrake. So with the handbrake lever, the handbrake mounting bracket cables and the, I don't know if it's aluminium actually, but the, uh, the heat insulation for those cables as they run through the engine bay. Up the back, we've got the roll bar that mounts to the chassis as well as the rear stays that then go back into the engine bay. And we've got the aluminium uh, chassis support bracket there for the Graziano. The kit comes with this Willwood pedal assembly. It's quite a nice assembly. And then you've got the seal kit at the back there that comes with the uh, pedal assembly, it comes with the kit. And that's to uh, assist in mounting those pedals and uh, positioning the master cylinders so that they can protrude through the rear or the front wall of the footwell. We've got a wiring loom. It is just a generic wiring loom. Unfortunately, it hasn't sort of been fitted off with all the connections and cut to the right lengths. Uh, so it's just sort of a plug and play unit. That would have been nice and it'd be a nice touch for them to consider that in the future, that's for sure. We've got seat belts here. A mono wiper, so the wiper motor and wiper arm. We've got the gauge set. So it's a 300 kilometer an hour speedo and an 8,000 RPM tachometer. Up the back, there's air conditioning components. So air conditioning hoses and then the air conditioning kit for under the dash that includes all the ducting and vents. Got steering wheel and the boss kit. I'm not really a fan of the steering wheel. It's just a little bit too modern for my liking. I'd like something a little more closer to the original style steering wheel. Uh, I'd also probably consider looking at a quick release steering wheel boss, just so I can remove the steering wheel, because I think that'll make it a lot easier to get in and out of the vehicle. We've got a window washer kit here. It's just a little bag that mounts in the chassis, and fill it with water and pumps out. We've got all the lights, so headlights, fog lights, reverse lights, tail lights, license plate lights, some switches. This isn't all of them. I just grabbed a few of them out that were handy. Um, some of them do actually have some more period correct attachments. So you pull the old knob off and put some nice billet um, control knobs on them. Immobilizer, dual horn set, all the mounting brackets for the switches. 
we've got a set of reproduction external mirrors. And then a battery and battery box to mount in the front of the chassis. Here we've got pre-curved headlight and fog light covers. So they just need to be drilled out and fitted. Up the back, we've got some end panels for the fuel tank gussets on the side of the chassis. In the white packaging here is actually the side windows. Um, they are pre-curved. I didn't want to actually remove them. I just don't want to risk them getting damaged. They do have the little side flap that opens up for some fresh air, and I've got the little um, hinge kit there to facilitate that. I've got the rear window, rear window surround, the rear window for the clip, but basically for the engine bay. We've got stainless steel vents for the rear clip and basically the back bumper. Infill panel for the rear wall of the cab and some chassis extension plates and that's the main plate for the rear wall of the chassis. And obviously we have the chassis itself. And that just about sums up all the parts that are supplied as part of this kit. So having run through all those components that came as part of this kit, a couple more questions that were asked. One, how long did it take for the kit to arrive? So I ordered this kit in July 2020 and I took delivery in July 2021. So it took 12 months. Uh, that's probably largely because I purchased all three stages at once. If you were to purchase stage one or stage one and stage two initially, uh, I'd like to think that the turnaround time would probably be a bit quicker. So another thing I wanted to cover was what's not included in the kit. So items that are not included in the kit are the engine and associated accessories and wiring. So I'm looking to go with the Gen 2 Coyote with eight stack injection. Um, I may need to drop the eight stack injection for uh, engineering or registration purposes initially, um, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Um, looking to speak to a number of engineers at the moment. Uh, transaxle flywheel clutch and starter motor. So I've purchased a Graziano six speed out of the Lamborghini Gallardo. So that's a re factory rear wheel drive six speed manual transaxle. Exhaust system. Uh, exhaust system will largely be dictated by meeting the uh, pollution and noise requirements uh, to get the car registered. Upholstery for the interior items. Um, so I'm looking to go with the black leather trim for seats and dash and either a black or a dark gray carpet. I'd like to try and integrate the stainless grommets into the seats, similar to the, the design of the original seats. Uh, even though the seat shells that I have are a much more modern bucket seat. Tyres, so obviously the wheels are being supplied, you can see them here behind me, but the tyres are not provided. Oils, fluids and adhesives, so that's everything for your engine, cooling system, and then adhesives uh, just to be able to fix things into place as part of the assembly. And lastly, paint. So paint, I suppose, is optional. I've gone with the custom gel coat color in the hope that maybe I don't need to paint it. I'll have a go at sanding down all the, the uh, mold themes and see what happens. If it's, uh, if it's a decent quality, I'll keep it as a gel coat, maybe even just for a short term. Um, well, just to get the car on the road and be able to enjoy it for a bit. And then it doesn't really take a lot to pull apart the body panels on this car to be able to go and get it painted in the future, if that's what I decide to do. So as I've mentioned in a few of the comments, this kit has cost me about $100,000 Australian to date, and that is just to purchase stage one, two, and three and have it delivered to my home. Uh, obviously there's additional costs associated with the engine, transaxle, and all those other components. What I'll look to do is to try and cover a bit of a build budget video in the future um, keen to get stuck into the build and, and maybe sort of part of that first video of, of actually progressing the, the assembly of the car, I can look to then add in the, the budget. Um, to be honest, I probably need to sit down and have another look at it to see how it's tracking and, and where I think it might be going. Thanks for tuning into this episode. 
I hope you've enjoyed the detailed run through of all the parts that come as part of this kit. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, leave me a comment so that I know that you're enjoying the content that I'm creating, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.